Now to, uh, and this will be a last one before we have a little break, um, and ho hopefully, uh, and I know some people have remained uh, from the public presentation here, this is item 13, the Great North Road Corridor. I, I wonder, Wayne, and, and welcome Matthew to uh, joining uh, Wayne at the table. I wonder, Wayne, if you could just set the scene for what you're actually looking for uh, from the committee, because um, obviously I, th I think there's, there's probably different expectations. Um, I think the, the paper itself makes it, it very clear, but if you wouldn't mind just introducing it, Wayne, how you come to be here and how you would like the Transport and Infrastructure Committee members to, to aid uh, Auckland Transport in the, in the decision-making that is to follow uh, with respect of this project. Okay, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. The, um, in terms of the inner west cycling networks, there are three components that, uh, that have been before the board in, in, in recent times. Um, one is the Great North Road, which we'll get on to. The other one is the Point Chevalier to Westmere, it's the Miola Road. And the other one was sort of other linkages, which are broadly termed the Waitamata um, safe routes. And um, the board, the, committee be well aware that um, AT and the board have had a, a closer look at those three elements uh, as part of the pause review, are we doing it the right way, is there cost to be taken out, those kinds of um, questions. And at, at a recent board meeting, the board, the board was very satisfied that the Point Chevalier to Westmere actually um, made sense to, to, to proceed to construction mainly because it was very, very strong um, local board support, strong community support. Uh, we had a site visit. We were sort of convinced, you know, we were, we were able to convince ourselves that actually it was a, it was a project ready to go and there were other benefits uh, around stormwater drainage and those kinds of things that we dealt with at the same time. And, it, and it, it fitted in with having to renew the network as well. So the board agreed to proceed with that. In terms of the Waitamata safe routes, um, the board's main concern, particularly because of financial constraints, was that those particular linkages were 100% funded uh, by council. They were, weren't going to get any funding from Wakakatahi, and we thought it would be, it'd be more prudent, given the current situation, to, 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 to pause on those and see if we can rectify the funding situation. So we, we haven't proceeded with that. Um, at this stage. Uh, the remaining one is the Great North Road, which we, we've brought back to you. So why bring it back, to, so why bring it back to this committee to have a, have a discussion about it? Um, I think the, the, the first thing is that the, um, we've been encouraged by the letter of expectation to uh, change our approach to some of these, some of these um, more, more difficult decisions, uh, particularly where there are significant trade-offs in, in in play, and they are with this this particular project, and and they, you know, those trade-offs are around cost. If we shifted curb lines, we could do something different, but the cost would be a lot lot higher. As an example, um, streetscape I think is really important in this this particular um, location. So if you if you uh, to say, do you, do you trade off street trees and 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 uh, with the footpath against other things? Um, there is uh, the safety of active modes, and also there's the current use of parking access, which the you know, local business uh, are saying is really important. So it's it's um, this is not as small, as straightforward as others. Okay, so I think it's it's a good one to to try and look at it. Uh, so this is a bit of an experiment, if you like, in terms of what's the right approach to, to sort of get the governance right across some of these decisions. So this is partly what this discussion is about. The other thing I'd say is that the, although this project is supported by the local board, it's a marginal majority support. I think I think it was 4-3 last time I was, I was correct. So, um, so no, nothing near as strong, for example, as Miola Road. The other thing is that if, uh, for, if I recall the discussion with the AT board correctly, if, if we had pushed for a clear yes or no decision for this on the board, I think it would again ended up 
maybe fall for. <laughs> you know, um, so clear, and, and for different reasons from different board members, some different who, who weren't quite so certain about it. So uh, it, it, it was agreed to conditionally. That's and that and those conditions were one: is it still a priority given our funding situation? And the second thing is subject to getting feedback from this committee about where they see the, the pros and cons of this particular project. And, and it may be that um, some concern, some things can be improved, or it may be that it, it's, um, you, you know, we're forced into it. Also, we end up being forced into a go, no go decision. Um, the, and, and so what we're looking for is, is actually feedback from committee members, and, and that's why the, the proposals there that we take it that that we that the um, AT staff will offer a site visit, and 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 and, um, and sort of discussions with committee members who want to follow up and, and provide their direct feedback that way. There there are three areas of context that I'd just like to add to my opening comments. Um, it's, it's, it's mentioned in the report, but it's, and, and it was mentioned in some of the submissions earlier today, is that the Great North Road is facing quite a lot of growth, and a lot of that's around apartment development and, 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 and those kinds of things, which is going to put, in the future, put um, different demands on the, the active mode infrastructure in, 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 in that area. And I think so, and, and also um, how, how the streetscape is treated and provides amenity for, for, for those new residents is, is, is also an important matter. I, I, the other thing too, and again we heard, we, we heard it from some of the submitters, is that if there was a geographic area of communities in Auckland that was, that was going to use cycling at scale, you would pick it would be this particular geographic area and, and community and, and sort of the AT board has had presentations from people who have shown all the things that have been done in the community over recent years to, to grow cycling and all the rest of it. So it's a, this is a different ecosystem from other parts of the Auckland region or, or the, the Auckland Isthmus. And so the, you know, the question in the back of your mind is that if we don't support good, safe public transport infrastructure, um, cycling infrastructure in this area, where would we do it? And the third general area I'd raise is the one that um, Stacey referred to, which is about the safety of people not in vehicles. The, um, the, the, we rely in terms of calculating safety benefits, what the, the, the rates of injury, et cetera, that are in the crash analysis system, which is the run, one run by the police. Over the last year or so, Auckland Transport's done a lot of research to understand what's actually happening in, in, on, on our networks to people not in vehicles. So we've explored Ministry of Health data with the Ministry of Health. We've, stored, we've explored ACC data with ACC. And the very, very clear picture that's coming back when, it, when we're looking at cyclists in particular is that the actual injury rate is about seven times that that is actually reported officially in the CAS system. And we're, when what, we're, what we're measuring there, what we're calling a serious injury there, is people that spend at least one night in hospital because they've been, come off their bike, been knocked off their bike, but it hasn't, hasn't um, come up or shown up in, in, in the official uh, accident record. So the, the other contextual thing in here then, if we know this is an area that we're cycling is has community support and is popular. If we know Great North Road is an area where there's going to be increased residential development close to the city, which will probably encourage active modes, then we, we, need, we need to make, make sure that the infrastructure we put in place is actually going to be safe for those users because the actual injury rates are a lot higher than what's officially out there at the moment. So, I very much look forward to your assistance with this. It's here because it's difficult, <laughs> okay? And it's, and, it, and it's here because um, two sets of governance, the AT board and the local board, have not reached a really strong majority conclusion on it. So uh, uh, I'm hoping that the work that your, what your committee members can do in looking at this will sort of 
help sift help sift through what's the what is the right basis to make the right decision for this project. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Wayne. Do do we have a, a presentation we do from, from this? Uh, we we'll do from Matthew. Yeah, yes. and I, I, I would just say just just very quickly and further to what you've said is this is exactly the sort of uh, decision I think, Mr. Mayor, that you, that we signalled in our letter of expectation, and. Um, Again, just reiterate Wayne's points that uh, that you know the the AT board are looking for feedback uh, from all of us or those who who feel so moved to give it. So, I think this this is a, a good trial, a good tester, and 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 I'm hoping you know people take advantage of that and use the site visit and, and the briefing to to, to inform a you know reasonably educated view of it because there are different complexities at work here. It's uh, as uh, we know there's, there's, there's a kind of interrelated network, but there are things particularly specific that I think we have to go and see to do it uh, due justice. So please proceed with the um, presentation. Okay, thank you, through Mr Chair. Um, so really, as Wayne identified, Great North Road, the purple area we're talking about this afternoon, and um, it is a key access point to the city. Um, it's part of the, you know, an old original subdivision of Auckland Central City there. So we've got a lot of side road access, but it's also got great connections to the motorway. And also, in terms of the development that Wayne talked about, the private sector is investing in the area at the moment. The zoning that the council put in place, the unit, unitary plan, allows six-storey apartments there. There's great views over to the Waitamata Harbour and there's great views on the other side looking over to the Waitakere Ranges. So as a residential place to live, it's close to the city, got great access and people are investing there. The businesses are also investing there and diversifying. So the car yards in the area are actually investing in offices. So we've got quite a cluster of PR and marketing firms now actually working in the offices above the car yards. So we're getting a good mix of investment there. And Kenya Aura have also actually invested further down past Bond Street in a quite a large development through that area. But the city street isn't keeping up with the pace of change. And particularly, we can't just make those changes with operational changes like some of the parking restrictions or we see here, the car yard um, truck delivering cars in the middle of the road because there's no space to do it. So we really need to provide a network for that corridor that provides for all those modes into the future. So what are we fixing for that future? Well, we do talk a lot about the cycle network here about introducing a dedicated cycle network. It's about fixing the public transport network there, providing better bus lanes through the corridor. It's about fixing that pedestrian environment through there. There's, in a five year period, there were 130 reported crashes on the corridor. 80% of them are at those 23 intersections through there. And 20% of the accidents along the corridor involve those vulnerable road users. So it's about making sure that the design of what the changes will be accommodate those needs as well as the movement needs through the corridor. And delivering longer and better dynamic sign bus lanes actually allows us to use that space that we have between curbs in a great way. So when we look at what are we actually going to achieve by the scheme, it's actually about getting more people through the corridor. The extension of the bus lanes is going to give us the buses through there a minute extra faster in the morning peak, while cars will have a 30 second delay by the changes and the road reallocation through there. That's 30 buses in the peak hour that go down there that will get that benefit. So we will have an uptake in, you know, in, in PT patronage, over 10% of what we've got currently. While we've identified only 20% in, uh, reduction in the crash rates, that's just a reported um, rate for our NZTA reporting. We believe that the infrastructure put in place, particularly around the uh, side road treatments and the pedestrian environment, putting in place more pedestrian crossings to allow access across the corridor and to the schools along the walking school bus routes will actually reduce that crash rate more. And the extension of the dynamic bus lanes will allow parking in the off-peak on the corridor. There is going to be a trade-off of a loss of 125 spaces along the corridor, but as identified in the report, there's currently over 800 spaces in a 200-metre um, circle from the corridor. 
and currently parking is underutilised. And when we've been working and discussing with the community and the business associations, there's a need to provide for three users in those car parking spaces that remain. And that's about providing for businesses so that there can be short-term turnover, providing for businesses so people can stay longer than one or two hours, but also some of the employees can park around there. And also making sure that there's longer term parking for the residents in the area through the residence parking scheme, but also for their visitors and longer term sort of day parking along those corridors. So those are all issues that we're currently working with the community on that. And we'll put in place a further parking engagement plan and management plan as we can go through the um, delivery of the project. So there has been a long journey since 2005 talking to the community and there's been some changes and some gaps in that as we've had COVID. So there's been three significant public engagements and we've taken the project through to our central HUI table through that process as well. We have got 51% funding for the project. It's got a good economic return of 2.4 at the current investment level. And that final contract award, as Wayne said, will be subject to us reprioritising and making sure that we've got affordability lens there on the revised capital programme. We work with the local community and the Waitamata local board who invested in the community coming up with a Great North Road community vision, which talked about that streetscape. And there's been core elements of that that we have been able to deliver through the project. And so when you look at the cost for the project, and the cost is identified in the report, you could say about 35% of the cost goes to that pedestrian and streetscape changes. About 27% of the cost goes to public transport and cycling infrastructure. And the rest go to moving the utilities, resealing the road. So there is a mix there. So you can get down into the individual level of mode, but when we're looking at what's needed on the corridor, it is about looking at it as an integrated whole. There are cost value engineering opportunities. We can look at replacing some of the concrete barriers with a separator, sorry, with, uh, with the plastic ones. But there's a trade off there again in the time that we've got to have that asset with us and replacing it. We can trade off some of the um, reseal process um, so that we do the reseal now or we wait three and four years um, and deliver the reseal then. So there are still some value engineering processes that we can go through as we finalize the decision on this. And while we do that as well, and even if the project does go ahead, there is further engagement with the community that will be done during the construction management. Not only the parking, but working with the local central hui tables about the planting and actually when we do go and dig up some of the sections to put in place those tree pits and move the services. So thank you. All right. Thank you for that um, presentation. So we'll, we'll open up... Uh, for, for questions now, and um, Councillor Lee, you want to start us off there? Uh, Mr Chairman, I, I don't wish to ask a question. I, I wish to make a comment if I could. Um, if you think it's appropriate now or after the questions. Well, well, I think we'll come back to you after questions, Councillor Lee, if that's all right. So we'll, we've got uh, Councillor Sayers, Henderson, the Mayor, and Councillor Ferry, and Councillor... Uh, through you, Mr Chair, thank you for that clarification. I'd like also like to ask a question and then perhaps make a comment um, when you open it up as well. So, so my question is, um, Wayne, uh, a little bit earlier we talked about... Well, first of all, thank you for kind of explaining to us the context of why it's at this committee meeting, the context in terms of your own borders, the context where the local borders, you know, was, let's see where we land today. But uh, we did talk earlier about the pressures that are on Auckland Transport in terms of your own operational and renewal budgets, right? So I guess uh, it kind of boils down to, you know, this is a capex spend, is that better to be uh, channelled, for want of a better word, into, you know, perhaps other priority areas? So could, could I just perhaps um, indulge you for a, just your comment around why, why would there possibly be a split that we're going into a capex spend at this financial cycle of Auckland Councils and Auckland Councils budget pressures to go ahead with this project rather than going to um, the, uh, renewals and operational spends? Well, well it's, it's a um, good question, but we, at the moment, um, through the budget process, we're being advised by um, 
council people that we you know they were still aiming at about a billion dollar capital program for the coming year. A lot of that's already committed, of course. Um, this this project actually has funding from Waka Katahi, from from the the bucket of money they use for this kind of project. So it's not available for other kinds of projects. And this is the seventh year that this community has been, this project has been worked through with the, the community. It's reached a point, you know, where a lot of work's been done on it, um, you know, and, 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 you know, a lot of progress has been, been made, not to everyone's satisfaction, hence we're here. But it's, um, you've actually got to honour all that time and effort, not just from the AT staff and, and the people working on it, but the, the time that communities have put into it as well. So we should not, we, to, to not proceed with this project would actually, I think it'd be just a hard, as, as a hard decision as to proceed with it really because of all the background of it. There are expectations out there that something would happen. And, and it is, at the moment, it is a funded project. Okay, um, I, I would, uh, but the, I mean, we've just heard yesterday about the extra bill for um, CRL, so I'm not sure how the council's going to handle that. That may even tighten things up further. So, um, so, so um, that's why the board put on two conditions. One was getting feedback from through this committee, and the other one was, uh, does it still make sense financially this year? Given given everything that's going on, so they are still. You know, there's two conditions there. Yeah. That's helpful. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Chair. Um, a lot of talk around the expense of cycleways, um, but I note in this presentation there's a lot of co-benefits here in terms of drainage, in terms of street lighting, um, all those kinds of things. Could you give us a cost breakdown? of how much the cycleway is costing versus all the other improvements that are being put in as part of it? Yeah, sure, through you, Mr Chair. Um, it's in the report. There's a table that identifies the costs in there, and the actual cycle component of just the cycle lanes is 3.6 million. But in terms of the delivery of that 3.6 million for the cycle lanes does tie into, as you can see in the picture, changes and improvements to the bus stops changes to the design of the um, uh, intersections to make them safer. So while you can break down the cost that the cycling is just 3.6, there are inter integrated costs in the yeah. other components. So, so just a quick follow-up. So would it be accurate to say that it's a $3.6 million cycleway, not a $30 million cycleway? That is one way to describe it. But, and I think that's why I broke down those costs in there so everyone could clearly see um, the different ways that you can break the cost down. This is an urban You've corridor. got a choice, Councillor Henderson, is how you don't want to describe it. Um, Mayor Brown. Uh, thank you. I could be described as the most local person here for this one. When it started, I was living at Turangi Road on the western end of this, and now I live at the eastern end of it. And my son is one of the ones who works above one of the car yards, so we, we no, it will. My problem about the, and I'm by the way happy about the dynamic bus lanes showing you, well done for that. My problem is the cost and I want to know, can we do it cycle only um, or could the growth well the other thing is that the growth is basically all along the north side of this section in um, residential it's not in the the southern side is heavily industrial and sales orientated. So could you do it on what, just on the northern side? Do cycleways have to be on both sides of the road? You can have two-way cycleway on one side. Could we, I'm just thinking, how can we get the price down? Could, can we do just the cycleway? Can we do just the northern side? Or, and, and the other question I have, is Williamson Avenue not a better route between town and Greyland shops? Uh, it's my preference to cycle. A bit of peddling to be done now. I see there's someone nodding at the back, but he's obviously unfit. Um, <laughs> the, uh, and the, the footpaths are pretty wide, particularly on the southern side of that. So, I, and I'm going to cycle it with my transport spokesman tomorrow on Saturday. I did say tomorrow it'll be Saturday, sorry. But um, 
So can you answer those things? Can we do it one side only? Can we do it less? If we just gave you five million, what could you do? I bet you could do it and, and have a few little seats somewhere and make it nicer. I mean, it isn't a drainage problem. And in, in K Road, the cycle though was ludicrously expensive and most cycles go on the road. If they wear lycra, they go on the road anyhow. And we've got all those rain gardens underneath it, which are a waste of time because they're at the top of the catchment. So uh, there's a few grenades lobbed at you. See if you can answer them, please. Sure, through you, Mr Chair. Thank you for that. Um, I think one of the critical things about the cost is, as uh, Wayne identified, keeping the curb lines where they are. And you can fit cycle lanes two-way on one side and reallocate the road space. We did look at um, examples of that and other corridors were, were looking at that as well. One of the key things about the two-way cycleway on this corridor was the extra delays it was going to create as it tied into K Road, Bond Street and, through the, and in the future through the village. So in terms of trying to get a balance there, in terms of the impact on the other modes, that was why um, one of the reasons why the, the um, single lane cycleways were put on. But it is possible to have that on there. Um, in terms of Williamson Ave as a better route, um, I mean, the development is happening on this corridor. Um, you know, the, the census data shows that, um, you know, 500 metres either side of Great, South, Great North Road is where the growth is going to pop up by 27% for the population. So people along this corridor have got that opportunity. Um, Williamson Ave, we would have very similar connections and issues to deal with in terms of loss of parking and it wouldn't provide the same level of connectivity um, as Great North Road to others down to the Northwestern Cycleway and so forth. Um, but it is an option that, that you know you could put cycleways on, but there will be different trade-offs and maybe not as much connectivity. Um, I acknowledge that the width of the footpath, it varies along there in some areas, it is, is pretty wide. Um, it does, the corridor does actually have a, a nice streetscape already in, in a lot of it, and by Looking at the sight lines, one of the safety issues and one of the reasons why there are those um, crashes through there, the statistics, is the sight lines coming out on some of those side roads. Um, so ch changes to the bus stops to make the bus stops more visible to extend the bus lanes, together with those sight lines, do remove some of those trees. But then we'd need to replace them under the RMA with more trees. So in terms of that gaps and actually making the streetscape good and using the footpath to the best ability, that does create some sort of narrowing of the footpath. But it is possible to look at it. Um, and um, you know, one of the options we did look at with the, with the um, community groups were about removing all the trees to keep the footpath and be able to provide some, some process down there. So they're all, they're all options that we can further look at, but we have looked at some of those. Okay, just to finish then, uh, I mean, if you ask the community long enough, the scope goes up and up and up. And this is kind of like a beautification project. It looks very nice and everything in the pictures. But what if I said to you, we'll give you $5 million, could you come back with what the best we could get out of that was? Instead of starting off with what we want and ending up having a bloody great bill that shocks everybody, the way that the other parts of the world do, they say, how much money have we got aside to do this? And I said, let's have $5 million. What, what can we get? And I reckon we'd get something quite good for $5 million. And so there's a challenge for you. You wanted some uh, some guidance, Wayne. There's my froth, and I'm and, and I'm the local. Okay. Okay. I think uh, here's a here's a question for you. Um, we, we maybe consider as as part of the the site visit, um, Councillor Ferry. Thank you, uh, and reserve my right to add a comment at a later point. Um, I have hopefully quite a quick question. Two very quick questions. Are you asking for new money today? Are you coming here saying we need more money for this than we already have budgeted and put aside? No. Yeah, Mr Chair, no, we're not asking for more money. Thank you. Uh, second question is um, in relation to the car truck party um, issue that was discussed earlier during the presentations, um, I asked the Business Association if there was a, a plan in here to deal with uh, the lack of loading bays and why we saw that photo before with the... And, and, and for those who've been along that road, they feel very enormous when you're right next to them or they're, they're in the road corridor space. Um, it, is that part of this plan? And if it is, um, which line item does that budget for those works fall into? 
the loading base for the um, car transporters. Thank you, Mr Chair. Yes, it does fit within this programme. We've looked at the loading bays for um, the car yards and also along, along the corridor where there's other businesses, but there's the provision for three extra uh, long loading bays, um, particularly outside those car yards. Um, where does the cost lie? The cost will probably lie in some of the um, bus lane provision and the road resealing because it's about line markings and signage. And just noting the, the buses is 5.2 million, is that right? The road improvements for the buses? The cost of that? Um, I just have to quickly look at the, what, sure. what it was in the report, but yep. I, I think it's around 3.9 or 4 million, so roughly around that, but it is identified. Sorry, 3.9 for the buses, yep. 5.2 for the pedestrians. Yep. Sorry, my mistake. Thank you. 3.9, you're right. Councillor Walker? A number of questions, um, and frankly, they arise from my experience of the um, Upper Harbour cycleway. Where there, is, where there is a cycleway that was put in place that was actually far more hazardous and dangerous than what was the case before. So the questions I've got that go to that, and they arise from some of the presentations, is the safety issue around people using this um, um, cycleway and passengers alighting from buses and having to cross the cycleway on a very, very regular occasion because this arterial is an incredibly busy bus route. So I've got a real issue around safety as it goes to that and just how quickly a cyclist is going to be able to stop to... Um, deal with multiple passengers alighting from a, a bus at a given point in time. The other issue that was raised that I've certainly had direct experience from is the design of these concrete separators, which are unsafe. The physical design of them because of the vertical sides is unsafe for uh, pedals. The other issue is that this cycleway is proposing to cater for young children that may be going to school at the same time as cyclists that are going to be, um, I'm assuming, going at speed, and that includes electric um, um, cycles, and I, I don't have any problem with them. And just around the safety issue around that, the other issue that was raised that really goes to safety is you're dealing with an arterial that's got buses and heavy trucks and, and the like, and the expectation that young children will be in the immediate vicinity, and if there is an accident that could be caused by a pedestrian or another cyclist or the like, the proximity of something that is life-threatening to them, in probabilistic terms, is very high. And from a risk perspective, um, disastrous. So and can then we, the other so question so I've can got... We just, can we just... There's, there's three things there, sure. Councillor Walker. So can we have a response to people alighting from the buses, the safety of the concrete separators, and, and young children in, in an area where there's maybe big uh, car transporters and other big vehicles? Yeah, no, thank you. Three, Mr Chair. Um, so the, um, the bus stops, I think there's a, a good image here and also um, on the slide... Afterwards, I'll, I'll go to the other slide in a minute. But here on the uh, picture on the right, you can see the bus stop on the left there, just between the trees. So you can see the picture of a cyclist going along that black um, asphalt, going behind the bus stop. And there's a zebra crossing for the pedestrian to get off. And then there's quite a wide platform um, that allows bus passengers to get on and off the bus without having to be actually impinged or put in danger by the cyclist. The design of the cycle facility around the bus stop is also um, has some design elements into it to slow the cyclist down there and narrows it up so it knows it's got a narrower point and there's going to be pot potential um, people there and there's different views from when it was just on the on-road bit. So that's, that bus stop is designed in a sort of safe system approach to ensure that there is that bus border to separate. Um, in terms of the concrete separator, um, as you can see in the drawing as well, um, the width of the concrete separator um, can vary. 
And uh, while there is a vertical element, there is also a vertical element on the curb. Um, we are looking at also looking at plastic um, separators to provide um, an alternate. Um, but I think one of the key things about the safety does come down to the width of the cycleway when those separators are used. And, and here we do have um, a 1.8 two metre cycleway to allow for um, you know, people to overtake and to not push the cyclists too close to the to this side. Um, in, in terms of the, the safety issue, obviously the safe system design is important. I mean, we've got a couple of schools on the corridor that are very positive about improvements, cycle and pedestrian. And um, you know, there's talk of, of cycle trains for the kids to get to school. Uh, by having that separator, it's just like having a curb. Um, and if there, is a, if there is an accident or a vehicle veers off it, then it is like a vehicle driving up onto the curb when someone's on the footpath. So we do design into the designs to try and overcome uh, risks. And uh, this has passed the safe system audit from WK and our own internal team. And ancillary question: um, Have you have you modelled the number of passengers alighting from uh, buses into the future? Because this is going to be, as you point out, a very busy um, area, and that is escalating. Modelled the 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 young children that could be in a, a bike train, or however you describe it, and the faster cyclists and the e-bikes, because there's an e-bike revolution um, occurring. So, how is this going to cope with? all of that, as compared to other alternatives that are being put up that might work with this or alternatively substitute for it? Yeah, through you, Mr Chair, certainly people management and um, is something that's looked at by the designers when they look at the facility and the capacity of those intersections. I mean, one of the things uh, along here in that interface between bus passengers and other users in the corridor is... You know, a bus can, even with a double decker, can only handle a certain amount of people. Currently, we do have a range of 1,500 to 2,000 people going on and off just in this section of the corridor on the current services that we have there. So we do anticipate that will grow, but believe the facilities that are being proposed can handle that, and the designers have gone through that. So it's, it's 1,500 to 2,000 alighting now. What are your projections into the future? Yes, so our projections into the near future are, are about 2,200 to 2,500. Right, thank you, Councillor Walker. We've got quite a lot of people lining up for speaking spots here, so if we can finish off the questions with uh, Councillors Dalton, Bartley and Fletcher. Thank you. And a small one from Councillor Darby. Thank you. Um, my question is around if there were major changes to this project, like downgrading it, you'd have to go back out and reconsult. And you have the risk of losing the Waka Kotahi money, which I think expires on the 30th of June. Um, you've been out and consulted so many times. What, 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 how long is this going to take if you have to go back yet again and say, well, we're going to take away this cycle lane and we're going to not do the stormwater? Because they're quite significant changes that are being proposed. That the risk of losing the money is my great is one of my greatest concerns. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, agree. I suppose some of the changes we talked about are, are minor tweaks to to the corridor, um, which could be undertaken without having to go back and reconsult. I think the main issue is around keeping the cost of the cycleway within that existing curb line. So it is the cheapest um, cycleway that can be delivered by keeping it within the curb line. Um, some of those other points, as um, Wayne talked about, were around you know, the level of streetscape. Can we save some funding there if we get the um, resource consent approval for the removal of the trees and we can limit some of that? Can we make some minor tweaks around the renewal process and also around the, um, the use of the separators, the change in the concrete to plastic? So effectively, if it does go ahead, you can just manage those things as you go with the, with the stakeholders. If, as if as we as proceed as on a design similar to this, yes. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Bartley. Oh, thank you. Um, I hang out at Philippe's um, after I work out in Grey Lynn at Book's office. So I, I sit and I watch that road. Um, and I see so many people walking their prams, walking their dogs, coming through on their bikes, 
the buses going through, the trucks going through, the cars going through, so many near misses. But is it fair to say that it is already being used as multimodal and that this is actually about playing catch up? Yeah, through you, Mr Chair, yes. And that was part of my opening point about it is multimodal, but the street today isn't, accommod isn't accommodating those, um, those uses without incredible risks, and that's particularly around safety. Yeah. And uh, what are the consequences if nothing gets done, considering we just had a report about DSIs as well? So through you, Mr Chair, if, if nothing gets done, then we, the, the emissions reduction... Um, we'll, we'll, won't go, won't be reduced as much as we want. The, the faster buses won't go as fast as they can, so we won't get that mode shift. Um, some of the operational is issues that we're getting today with the trucks, with the loading and the parking won't be addressed, and potentially some of those safety issues that we talked about won't be addressed. Councillor Fletcher. Oh, thank you. Um, my first question is to Chair uh, Donnelly. And that is to what degree will, and, and thank you for your explanation as to why this has come here, but how do you see our response to you becoming a model for future um, pathways or cycleways around the rest of the region? It's probably a bit early to tell. <laughs> it's, it's sort of... Um, I'll, 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 uh, I think I think it's sort of if you joining joining up the government's approach, I think sort of should be preserved for when there is evident difficulty in in, in sort of you know confirming community view trade offs, you know because you can you, you can you can deal with most things just by spending more money. So sometimes those trade offs can be you know can be quite important. Um, I don't know. I'm, it's, the, the term that my board uses is we're feeling our way on this. We, d we don't know what the, right, what the right approach is, but we're trying, you know, with, with, with John's blessing, we're trying um, on this one to see how it works and we can, we can reach a conclusion together whether it was useful or not. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so my next question is to our Chair John. Um, don't want to put him on the spot, uh, but... I, I welcome the fact that in a policy sense, um, Auckland Transport are giving us the opportunity uh, to give some feedback on this. For myself, and I've discussed this with you already, I feel that I haven't been sufficiently close to this to have a, an educated view on it, and I, I won't want to make that view until I've had the site visit. Could you please give a little bit more detail as to what's planned for the site visit and whether we will have the opportunity to address some of the issues that have emerged during the questions session that we've had just now? Certainly. I think I'll, I'll, I'll bring Barry in there because he's been handling the arrangements. Uh, so um, my understanding of a quick conversation with um, Auckland Transport with Mark uh, just a little while ago, we're looking at early April uh, for a site visit and a briefing. Um, I understand this is going back to the May board meeting at Council, so that, that's a good time frame to uh, allow councillors to come and have a look at the site and to um, uh, ask questions and get a, a better understanding of it as you've uh, requested, Councillor Fletcher. That's good. But you can assure us that we will have the opportunity to really scrutinise some of those issues that have come through in the questions. Correct. That's Thank the you. intention of the site visit. Correct. And that's uh, the May meeting of the Auckland Transport Board, yeah. OK, uh, final question, Councillor Darby. Actually, Councillor Fletcher has just put it. That's good. Thank you. We, we have uh, quite a line-up of, of speakers here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so we have to move an extension of time. So I'll, I'll move Any that. Seconds, Moved by Councillor Walker, seconded by Councillor Sayers. All those in favour? Oh, okay, against, carry. But clarification, can I, can I just start? Yeah. So we're now speaking to the motions and they are the A, B and C? So, sorry, so so what I was going to uh, do, Councillor Darby, I, I was, given how long we've been going, I was just going to break for five minutes, uh, put the recommendations up, and, and that will be the recommendations we'll be speaking. Uh, I'll move them, 
um, and our Council of Fletcher will second them and then we'll, we'll speak to them. They are as in the report, ABC. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that's what we're speaking yep. to. We're not relitigating no, no, the that's, whole we're, we're, thing. We're, we're, we're talking to the motion. Speaking to the motion. Thank, Thank you. you. So we, get, we have a very quick five minute break to, to recharge your batteries, folks, and we're back here uh, in a few minutes' time. Um, and then that will begin. If you could uh, return to your seats, please. Thank you. Hope everyone's had a ch chance to have a, have a drink of water or, or, or tea, watery tea, which is more what the, the people that aren't councillors get, I suppose. So. Okay, so we're now um, into into the uh, the debate. There's the resolutions that. Um, have been moved and seconded. So I'd appreciate if people were just speaking. We're not here to <laughs> debate the, the merits of the, the case uh, at this, because one of the uh, one of the resolutions, of course, uh, involves a site visit and a, and a briefing there. So certainly, from my point of view, I want to find out more about this uh, this project and see it live on site and, and possibly even cycle along it. Uh, and that'll hopefully be a basis to make a bit more informed feedback, which is what we're being asked to do. Okay, no further ado, leading off uh, the debate, Councillor Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, first of all, I would note that this is uh, an unusual situation, and I guess that underscores how divisive and how polarising this particular issue is. It's polarising in the community, and I'll talk about that in a minute. It's certainly divisive in the Waitamata Local Board. As um, Chair Donnelly has pointed out, it's divided the AT Board. And I can say from, from what I've been told and what I've read in media accounts, exactly divisive within AT staff. And um, it's possibly divisive within Auckland Council, but I hope not. Um, I think we need to show a lead in terms of trying to seek compromise here rather than a winner-takes-all approach. And I guess the reason why we're only discussing one aspect of this $100 million scheme is that the first uh, as section of it, the Point Chevalier Miola Road component was supported unanimously, I guess, by the AT board. Um, I supported it um, because I felt that my community had been polarised and divided too long and that I, as an elected leader, needed to show a spirit of compromise. I'm hoping um, that will be reciprocated but um, I suspect it may not. The other aspect of this is that this is very expensive, and we, of course, are in the middle, almost in a parallel universe, in an unprecedented budgetary crisis. And none of us are sure how this will play out. This is unique in my experience, where annual plans were pretty humdrum. So um, in terms of the cost of this, Mr Rednall has said it's the, the cycleway is only a minor part of it. I'm afraid I have to disagree. The cycleway means that the vehicle lanes will be reduced. The cycleway means that the existing bus lanes will have to be rebuilt and that this particular component of the project rather than costing $12,000 a kilometer or $12,000 a meter excuse me um, 12 million uh, a kilometer it's $18,000 a meter i know that the mayor has experience in these sorts of building projects and I think he's had some comparator figures with international, the building at vertical international hotels, but at 18 million 
a kilometre for this particular project because all those add-ons which are a direct consequence of the cycleway. Now, there, there, there are alternatives and there, were, there is a community vision which is talking about uh, a cycleway um, on the footpath which are pretty huge, 4.1 metres, which would be way less disruptive and way less expensive. But in terms of disruption, this is not any old street. This is a main arterial of the city. And our transport system is under huge pressure right now. PT um, is actually just just 60% um, of, of what it should be, um, yet roads are already over capacity. And so this project will not only build a cycleway, but it will constrain that main arterial permanently. But building it will be also be disruptive. And I, I, I must say I, re I received a text from a staff member during a meeting which said, where will these people be who are advocating the cycleway when AT is torn to pieces when Great North Road is, is built, is, is dug up and disrupted for months on end? You won't hear from them. AT will, will, will cop the flak. And maybe this, this council will, if, if we go down this particular path, I'm um, concerned uh, about um, the process. Uh, I, if, if you keep getting the same advice, um, you'll end up with the same result. The same, the same advice was given to the Waitamata Local Board. The same advice has been given to AT Board on a number of occasions, and we're hearing the same advice today. I have to say, there's no spirit of compromise in that advice. There's no flexibility. Um, it's uh, it's um, the same story I've heard for a long time. Now, Chair Donnelly talked about the special ecosystem of this particular ward. To uh, wrap up, Councillor Lee. Please. I'm going to, sorry, Mr Chairman, I need to finish. What, what, so someone I move need to team. finish. Okay, a moved an extension, second. Thank you. Okay. I want to talk about the ecosystem of, of this particular ward because it's reputed to be quite different. Well, all, all, all parts of Auckland are different and yet they're all the same. We're all Aucklanders. I think at one stage we were talking about a, a region of 100 villages and that's quite true. But in terms of, that's the perception is that the Waitamata, um component of this ward uh, uh, is made up of fanatical cycling supporters. Well, we have to go back to the data. And in terms of the last census, some interesting figures on commuting to work. In this ward, 35.7% of people walk to work, which is admirable. 33.3% use a car, 14.7% use a bus, and only 2.9% use a train. Below that, 2.6% cycle. And I think if you look at the, the census figures right across Auckland, including Waiheke Island in terms of cycling, it's about that. Uh, Councillor Williamson has had a good look at this. And could, let's have a look at AT's data. AT says that cycling is 23.3% below the 2019 figure, which w w we, we uh, can deduce from the, from the census figures. And last year, 0.3% below the year before. In the report, on the AT's report to the council just presented today is saying 
uh, cycling counts are down, in part due to the de decrease in overall travel demand on the network and more working from home. And I guess the people who tend to cycle are not the forklift drivers and the labourers on the road. They are the white collar middle class people. But, sorry, so I, I just make that point, point Mr. Chair. I have to call I, a point I, of order. I, I want to make a plea here this that we, if we, sorry, we're given this responsibility. Sorry, sorry. So point of order, Councillor Darby. Um, Chair, we're well over time. We're we're into eight and a bit minutes now, and. Um, are we going to run by the standing orders or not? Because I don't think all of us want eight and ten minute speeches here. So and we are not speaking to the motions. So uh, we, we moved an extension of time. That time is now up. So could, I think we'll, we'll terminate it. I make a plea that we, we've given this responsibility. We have independent advice. Not the same advice that has led to indecision all the way up the chain to where we are today. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other speakers to, to the item? We have Councillor Sayers and Councillor Ferry and Councillor Walker. Councillor Philippina. I just got a question of clarification before the speaker's chair. Yes. Is that okay? I, I know the three recommendations there are noting, um, and we also have, as Councillor Fletcher and Councillor Darby mentioned, a, a site visit to be arranged, would it be more prudent um, for the discussion to take place after the site visit um, and then give direction to Auckland Transport um, prior to the 14th of April? That's the only clarification um, because I know there are three noting ones and I mean, I, I won't be speaking to the three that's there only because I'll be going to the site visit as it arranged, and then I'll make my um, my my corridor there, my whakaro kilda. I think that's an excellent clarification, clarification Councillor Filipina. That's exactly what is up there, and that's what uh, pe people should be uh, s speaking to. Councillor Sayers. Yeah, thank you, and uh, thank you, Councillor Filipina, because that's I guess that was my comment. I think I've got to wait until we've done the site visit to give that feedback. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Sayers. Councillor Ferry. Thank you. Uh, I will probably not be able to attend the site visit uh, as I'm actually away that, um, the week that it's likely to be. So um, forgive me if I take a bit of time to give some input now. Um, I acknowledge that these resolutions are uh, a different process from what we're used to. Um, I think, though, that they do find a way forward in um, what has been a tricky situation. Uh, I've been a strong supporter of this project uh, and been further convinced by um, much of what we've heard today. Uh, I would just note that the community-led vision, um, the people who uh, did that, um, were here today speaking in favour of this project and acknowledging they're still here in the crowd. They spoke with the Bike Auckland people. Um, this is not a gold-plated project at all. Um, it's not going to be like Key Street. It's um, actually quite modest in a lot of ways. There has been years of compromise and flexibility through the discussion um, with the community that has resulted in many, many changes. Um, so this is very different from the Upper Harbour situation which my colleague, um, Councillor Walker, raised um, and where there was no community discussion or consultation and I think it's agreed by all that there should have been and there now is a, con a conversation underway. Um, this is coming at the end of years of those conversations, not um, after. Tim Tams have already been put in, which are actually quite a cheap way of doing this. So um, I will be supporting um, these. I obviously will, will keep an open mind and, and give some staunch feedback, um, although I may not be able to go to the site visit. I'm actually very familiar with the area. I've cycled, driven, been through there on a bus many times, um, but I really appreciate the opportunity that's been offered for the site visit, for the briefing, and for us to do, give our feedback this way. So thank the Chair and the Deputy for coming up with us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ferry. And final speaker, I think, is uh, Councillor Walker. I'll be uh, very brief, Mr Chair. Um, in, in instances where we've got generous um, footpaths and spaces that can be modified, Auckland Transport in the past, particularly in respect of shared spaces, has had trials 
they've put various objects in the place, they've demarcated an area. It would be incredibly inexpensive to do something like that for this corridor. And you test things out. They cost next to nothing. The only way that we are going to get more people cycling, more economically, in numbers, is to do things like that and be creative. And I find it very disturbing that we occupy so much time on gold-plated um, solutions that may well be totally impractical and, uh, and then, as Mike Lee points out, just generate further costs that may be unintended consequences that destroy a major arterial in Auckland. So that is my plea for trials for pragmatic solutions. All right, uh, thank you. So it's been uh, moved and uh, seconded. I will put it to the vote. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? No. Uh, so carried, and uh, we certainly look forward. Look forward. Oh, unanimously, yes, and we certainly look forward to that site visit, Barry, and uh, well, more details as soon as that becomes available. So thank you, everyone, for that. Uh, just getting to the end of our uh, Auckland Transport presentations now. Uh, the, the next one up at, uh, is on ferry.